Right now, it is time to bring somebody who's not jumping off of Satry Hill, but once again jumping into the concert pit, ladies and gentlemen, on the 16th and 17th this month. It's time to bring in Christine Gavert from Crescendo. Good, Good morning, Christine. Good morning. Good morning, Marshall. Thank you for having me. Well, you've got a couple of things coming up. Uh, once again, uh, on the 16th at St. James Place in Great Barrington, the 17th at Trinity Church in Lakeville, Connecticut. Uh, another uh, fresh concert. Yes, and uh, I call upon all of the people that like the idea of Valentine's Day and celebrate Valentine's Day in a different way, because Crescendo is bringing a concert that's a little bit different than our usual concerts. It is a small group of professionals, and, and actually it's called Concerto delle Donne, the Concert of Ladies. So we bring three fantastic sopranos that will um, sing music that was written for the very first en ensemble of professional women. How, how about that? So you have a lot of secular subjects, mostly related to love, uh, some of them very humoristic and satirical even uh, in the way they were set, the poetry and the music, but lovely, lovely music for solo soprano, for duets, and for trios. Now, so, so, so these could be these uh, three could be the, the first three divas. The first three divas, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, it's not quite Broadway, but it was a time in music when uh, drama became important. Yes. So, 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 what's going to the uh, into into who's going to be performing? So, who is going to be performing is soprano Catherine Hancock. Um, she is an, in uh, from of English descent. Uh, and studied at Juilliard and then performed uh, for a while in Baroque Opera in um, in England as well as somewhere in the United States. And now is, um, we lucky, lucky, so lucky are we. She lives in Great Barrington now. So I've been able to collaborate with her for the last year quite extensively with Crescendo. So that's Catherine Hancock. And then we have our own Rebecca yeah. Palmer, from Canaan, who also went off, uh, obviously, to study in different places in the country, in Boston and New York, and in uh, and, uh, California, sorry, and then studied as well in uh, in Germany, is, is, has lived in England and performed, and now is based in Krakow, Poland. We're so lucky that Rebecca is here in the United States, and and uh, has been for two months. So she's been working with us on this program, and um, so that's the second soprano. The third soprano is Jennifer Tayo, who's been also a frequent soloist with Crescendo. Jennifer um, performed professionally for a, quite a while in the early music scene in Amherst, Massachusetts with Arcadia Singers and Players, quite a renowned ensemble, and has been a, a crescendo collaborator for a while and is based in Lakeville for now. So those are the three sopranos, accompanied by the Orbo and Baroque guitar player Hideki Yamaya, also a frequent performer for crescendo, and myself on the harpsichord and organ. Now, are you going to talk a little bit about... Uh, uh at the concert, uh, about where this music comes from and how it developed, or, or absolutely, okay. we will we'll give a few remarks. We, as always, have a very elaborate, long program that also explains this. But basically, what happened is towards the end of the 16th century and the 1660s, 70s, um, there was almost like a cultural revolution that led then 30 years later in, in 60, around 1600, as the, one marks the beginning of the Baroque times. And why that's so important, it, it was an intellectual, cultural uh, movement um, that was a, a, a kind of enlightenment. So people uh, examined uh, the arts, culture, the, basically the whole way of thinking became humanistic, which is the basis of how we think, how democracy is, how our how our our own modern, if you may call it so, thinking is the basis of that happened. That's why Baroque is so important, and I guess why I'm so passionate about Baroque music because it marks the beginning of the way of how we think it goes way beyond mu music or art. 
Um, and so there was uh, looking back to the Greek cultures, to the obviously great uh, philosophers, um, poets, artists, and also the Greek drama. All of what we do now is based on the Greek drama, also Broadway and um, and musical comedy, film, everything is based, the, the Greek culture figured this out way before we did. So in the Baroque times, they literally sat together um, and examined these, these um, old texts from the Greek culture. And so there was a big break with the current uh, aesthetics, and it was a very deliberate thing. And the music we are doing was born exactly in those years. It was a fascinating, also small um, event that happened at the court of Ferrara, it- Italy. Um, and the Duke started to support a fabulous composer, and he, for whichever reason, had three women that were paid to sing, which was completely unusual and never heard for um, heard about before. These three women, the ladies of Ferrara, created this concert, this group, Concerto delle Donne, and performed concerts in a highly expressive style, which was also the new thing, that the accompaniment was really at the service of the text and the expression Rather than being a, a kind of an architectural construction with counterpoint, it was a little somewhat abstract. So music became very alive, supportive of the meaning of the text, of the drama, really. And so these ladies performed the soloists and duets and trios written for them, and this was became so famous, and the Duke um, used this as a, had kept this very secret. This was called Musica Secreta, the secret music, and there were concerts that were visited from from people from all over Europe. They were invited, and and um, it was almost like a secret weapon <laughs> of culture. I wish more of this was um, uh, so. In in our era, we seem to have a, lost a little bit touch with the value of culture and how powerful it is and what it means. So. Anyway, this is kind of a, a remark, but by then it became world, um, world famous, literally, and these concerts, these women apparently were outstanding, and you can tell that this repertoire is not performed a whole lot. It requires um, not only virtuosity, but also a lot of expression, and um, in the classical music, I don't know, it's, you, you go more in general, for the later periods where the songs got, I would say, a little diluted. It then also got developed and became, I don't know, something different, and opera and cantalas and whatnot. But this music, I compare it with probably, in a way, gosh, Broadway from the drama (laughs) and uh, jazz singers from the flexibility of the voice, and it's almost like an improvisation, the, the way they ornament their their um, cadences. It's like a jazz sing- singer is fluidly improvising. And, and this is back, I mean, this music is, dates back into the 1500s, right? Yes, 1570-something. <laughs> and then, uh, and we take it a little further, and we perform, well, I would say half of the concert is exactly this music by this one composer who created all of this. His name is Lutasko Lutzaski. The music, uh, mu- the composer of the Ferrara Court, and then obviously uh, when the Baroque exploded, so to say, composers took this on, and we have composers that are more known nowadays, like Claudio Monteverdi is so well known. We perform works of his, also written for high voices, and then a woman, probably the most prolific composer of secular music, drama in the first half of the 17th century, and still not very known in, in, in our scene, but widely published by now, Barbara Strozzi, a Ill- legitimate daughter as well, but her father supported her a great being created an academy to feature her voice and her compositions. And then um, another very known uh, in, the, in the insider, um, Giacomo Carissimi, who wrote a humoristic cantata who wrote lots of secular works. In this humoristic cantata, we basically have a fight 
intellectual a discourse between um, uh, Cupid or love and indignation, who says the cure for all of the problems with love is indignation. And they defend their standpoint of view like a, like a fantastic uh, debate. <laughs> so it's a fun and funny cantata. And the third soprano is the narrator that sets the stage and mm-hmm. makes commentary. So that's a cantata originally for three sopranos. All right. So this is, uh, once again, uh, Crescendo, February 16th. Uh, at St. James Place in Great Barrington, February 17th, uh, the uh, 4 p.m. show at uh, Trinity Church in Lakeville, Connecticut. All the information you need is at worldclassmusic.org. You can get tickets there. You can get more information. That's worldclassmusic.org. Christine, thanks for uh, joining us early this morning. Thank you so much, Marshall, and have a good week. You too. Bye. Uh, Christine Gevert from Crescendo here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.